Oh yeah, today we are learning with one of the funniest ever clips from Family Guy. And if you are new here, every single week we bring you super fun lessons just like this one that help you understand fast speaking natives without getting lost, without missing the jokes, and without subtitles. So hit that subscribe button and the bell down below so you don't miss a single one of these most fun ever lessons for your English. Aw, yeah. Please forgive me, Mr. Oinkbaum, you will be missed. There we are. What are you doing? None of your beeswax, Ramona. But if you must know, I need a plane ticket to San Francisco. <laughs> Good luck. Plane tickets are about 450 bucks. 400? Brian, hit me in the mouth. What? Why? I hear this tooth fairy gives you money for your teeth. Have at it. Uh, okay. No, no, don't, don't, don't. Stop, stop. Why did you stop? I said hit me. You flinched. Well, of course I flinched. You were going to hit me. Well, make up your mind. What do you want me to do? Hit me. Ah, no, don't, don't, don't. <sighs> I'm sorry. Look, I know I'm being hard to read. <laughs> what are you doing? None of your beeswax, Ramona. All right, Izzy. So what is this that he's saying? None of your beeswax. I think it's just a playful way of saying none of your business or mind your own business. It's none of your concern. Exactly, and this variation of it using beeswax, it sounds very much what a child would say instead of none of your business, none of your beeswax. What is beeswax? Beeswax is that natural substance that uh, bees produce, mm -hmm. right? And I think people make uh, candles out of that too. I don't know what do. kind of other products you can make out of it, but a candle is one of them. Mm -hmm. Cosmetic products, it smells really nice. All right, and he referred to his piggy bank. That's what this place where kids keep money is called is a piggy bank as Mr. Oinkbaum. What's the humor in that name for the piggy bank? Please forgive me, Mr. Oinkbaum, you will be missed. <laughs> Sounds like a real last name, right? Because the, the Baum, I think that's uh, maybe Dutch or I don't know what Yiddish. kind of European language. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, but Oink is the sound that a pig makes or that's how you would uh, try and imitate that in English. It's like Oink, right? Oink, exactly. Oink. <laughs> and he says, there we are as an expression. What does that mean? Please forgive me, Mr. Oinkbaum. You will be missed. There we are. What are you doing? It's just like, there you go. It's another way of saying it, which is like all done or I'm finished doing what I'm doing. So <laughs> when, whenever you just accomplish something and you want to just express that you're done, you say, there you go. There you are. Amazing. And this construction he used, you will be missed. It's a really interesting word order, right? But it just means the same mm -hmm. as will miss you. Please forgive me, Mr. Oinkbaum, you will be missed. Yeah, it's kind of formal, right? And you'll mm -hmm. see that uh, it's kind of a theme in his language, the way he speaks, that right. from time to time, he uses a more formal expression. Mm -hmm. And Family Guy has some really amazing instances of connected speech. So let's check out some that we had already just in this short beginning of the clip. So this expression, none of your beeswax, it almost sounds like one word. Can you replicate how he said that? There we are. What are you doing? None of your beeswax, Ramona. Yeah, so it's all connected. Basically, none connects with of, so none of, and the of connects with your, none of your. None of your beeswax, Ramona. And we have a great example here of something that happens all the time that many questions become completely connected, and this can make it really difficult to understand fast speaking natives, right? So we have. What are you doing? How did Brian say that? There we are. What are you doing? Mm -hmm. So he comes in and immediately says, what are you doing? What are you, what are you doing? And this, what are you becoming what are you? That's a really nice word chunk to learn, meaning a series of words that become like one sound. So instead of saying, what are you, what are you? And you're going to notice this all the time now, if you pay attention to that, that we can <laughs> see that all the time. What are you doing? So that's very oddly specific that Brian knows how much a plane ticket costs, but he said 450 <laughs> bucks. What does that mean, bucks? But if you must know, I need a plane ticket to San Francisco. <laughs> Good luck. Plane tickets are about 450 bucks. 400? Basically dollars, right? Mm -hmm. Or any currents, I guess, but and more commonly just when you're talking about American dollars. Exactly. It's our nickname for our currency, pretty much. And I'd say we use that even more than we say dollars. 
A fun fact is that Brits use a different word to refer to their currency pounds. They'll say quid. So if you're watching a British series, you might hear 450 quid. I think we all have that, right? In Portuguese, we have our own ways of uh, saying reais, which uh, is our currency. Mm -hmm. That's true. 400. Brian, hit me in the mouth. What? Why? I hear this tooth fairy gives you money for your teeth. Have at it. There's kind of this ongoing joke in this series because Stewie is a baby and he has these things that are very innocent, very childlike, like the tooth fairy. But then at the same time, he's like this mad genius. So we see here he refers to the tooth fairy. Do you know what the tooth fairy is, Izzy? Yeah, we have that here in our culture in Brazil. Uh, and I think it's the same as it is in the American culture that you would, uh, as a kid, you, you believe that if you put your uh, baby tooth Mm -hmm. that fell right uh, you put it under your pillow and when you go to sleep um the, the tooth fairy will trade it for some sort of reward right some sort of gift <laughs> yeah actually in the states they give you money which i suppose depends on how good the child is or how generous the tooth fairy is feeling mm -hmm. and i like that you also brought up this term baby tooth or baby teeth which are the teeth that you have that you get when you're a kid but then fall out before you get your mm -hmm permanent teeth, I guess, or your adult teeth. I was curious about this because here in Spain, actually, they don't have the tooth fairy, but they do have a, a different character called the ratoncito Perez, which is like a little rat. It's the, the Perez <laughs> little rat. For me, that's kind of like a bizarre concept that there's a rat coming into your room in the middle of the night and taking your tooth away. But that's what they believe here. That's scary, isn't it? It's like <laughs> almost like a, a boogeyman kind of exactly. thing. <laughs> What's a boogeyman, by the way? A uh, boogeyman is, it's like a general concept of a monster that might sneak into your room while you're sleeping and I think takes children away or something like that. It's probably used to mm -hmm. scare children into behaving well. Hey, I'm sure that by the end of this lesson, you'll have learned tons of advanced words and expressions in English. But let me tell you that, unfortunately, if you don't review them enough, you will forget them. So to help you remember all this vocabulary that you're learning with this lesson, we've created an exclusive deck of flashcards on a real life app. I wanna show you how it works. On the app, we use an advanced memorization technology called space repetition. It's a scientifically proven way for you to build long-term memory where you review the new and more difficult words more frequently. And as you validate your knowledge of these words, the system will space them out. So you see them less and less frequently as they join your active vocabulary until you finally no longer need to review the word because it's part of your long-term memory. Now, can you imagine just being able to speak English as naturally as I do and remembering all those important words that you actually need when you get into conversations that actually matter to you, like a job interview, for example? You actually can. It is possible for you to start internalizing all these words. And you can do that in a really fun, natural, and convenient way with these lessons, like this Family Guy lesson and the exclusive deck of flashcards that you can get on a real life app. If that sounds interesting to you, you should check it out right now. It's free to download and you can look for it on the uh, App Store or Google Play. Just look for Real Life English or just click in the link in the description below for a shortcut. And I'll see you there. And what does this construction have at it mean? What? Why? I hear this tooth fairy gives you money for your teeth. Have at it. Uh, okay. I think when you want to give somebody permission to just go ahead and do something without hesitating, mm -hmm. you know, without thinking twice, just like have at it. Uh, for example, uh, you've cooked something and like a pie and somebody's interested in just like, having a piece and they ask you and you can say just like, have at it. Mm -hmm. Grab one. What? Why? I hear this tooth fairy gives you money for your teeth. Have at it. Uh, okay. No, 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 stop, stop. Why did you stop? I said hit me. You flinched. All right, what does it mean to flinch? So to flinch is this sudden instinctive movement that you make when you are afraid of something or you feel pain. It's like, right? I think that's literally when you flinch. like... Why did you stop? I said hit me. You flinched. Well, of course I flinched. You were going to hit me. Well, make up your mind. What do you want me to do? Hit me. So he says, make up your mind, which is because Stewie keeps going back and forth of like, hit me. And then he's reacting like, no, don't hit me. And so he's saying, you know, choose, make a decision, make up your mind. The way that Brian said this is super connected. So what do you want me to do becomes, what do you want me to do? What's happening there with the connected speech, mm -hmm. is he? So exactly what we already explained with what ya, what ya, 
And then the rest of that sentence is you drop the T in once. So it's like one, one me, one me to do. And the T sound in the word to becomes an American T. So it's like, ra, to do. What do you want me to do? Well, make up your mind. What do you want me to do? Finally, Stewie says that he knows that he's being hard to read. What does that mean if someone is hard to read? That reminds me of psychologists, for example, who read your behavior, your uh, facial expressions, body language. So basically, when you are trying to interpret what people are doing, like uh, by their facial expressions, as I said, you are reading them. And in this case, Stewie was saying that he was just like hard to read because he was just going back and forth. Like, mm -hmm. no, 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 hit me. No, no, no. Similar expression might be a poker face. If someone has a poker face, it's like when playing poker, you don't want people to be able to read if you have a good hand or a bad hand. So you try to be expressionless. So it's hard to read someone who has a good poker face. All right, let's check out the rest of the scene. Hey, you there, buy this yellow drink. Hey, Prego, Prego. Hey, hey, I'm talking to you, Tubby. Oh, don't you ignore me. Ooh. Pardon me, sir. S sir, sir. Go oh, the hell with this. Ah! 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 So we had to do it the hard way, hmm? Six bucks! Nice looking wife you've got. Maybe I'll look her up while you're in the hospital. Don't forget your lemonade. All right, so in just these two short clips, we have some really nice examples of American culture with the piggy bank, the tooth fairy, the lemonade stand. I actually, when I was a kid, did this myself. It's very typical that in the summer, you'll set up a lemonade stand and you'll sell each one, you know, maybe for like 50 cents or a dollar or something like that. And it gives you some spending money that you can use to buy a toy, buy a video game, something like that. So. Stewie is trying to do that here to make some money to buy a plane ticket, but he's not such a polite vendor, we could say. So he says, <laughs> buy this yellow drink, which sounds like he could be talking about something else, but he's talking about lemonade. <laughs> hey, you there, buy this yellow drink. So yeah, he says like a prego mm -hmm. and tubby referring to the pregnant woman. So that's kind of offensive. Yeah, but, they're both very uh, offensive. <laughs> if you refer to a, <laughs> you refer to a pregnant woman in this way, don't do that. <laughs> Hey, Prego, Prego, hey, hey, I'm talking to you, Tubby. Oh. That's pretty much that, like, Prego is like pregnant, right? Mm -hmm. Slang for pregnant. And Tubby is slang for fat uh, or overweight. Pardon me, sir. S sir, sir, go the hell with this. Ah! So he tried a more polite approach, but it also didn't work. So, so he said, pardon me. What does it mean, mm -hmm. pardon me? It's just a polite way to ask for attention, to excuse yourself, even. It's like you could say just sorry. I think that's mm -hmm. a more American way to say it, right? Yeah, I think pardon me might be a bit more British. I'll use it sometimes, but we'll usually say excuse me. And he says, don't you ignore me. What does that mean if you say this sort of construction? Don't you? Hey, Prego, Prego. Hey, hey, I'm talking to you, Tubby. Oh, don't you ignore me. Ooh. Yeah, this is basically giving somebody a direct command. So don't you do this, uh, like don't you dare when you want to say like, don't try, don't even try doing that. Don't you dare doing that. Mm -hmm. So it serves almost like as this warning or threat. That don't you dare can be a very useful phrase if you have a naughty child who likes to push the mm -hmm. limits and see what they can get away with. And then finally you said to hell with this. What does that mean? Pardon me, sir, S sir, sir, go the hell with this. It's pretty much when you don't care anymore about a person or a thing and you're just willing to ignore it, to abandon it. So you just say like to hell with it. For example, to hell with the rules. Let's just do it our way. Or to hell with the weather. Let's just go to the beach. Right? You're ignoring it. Even if it's raining, mm -hmm. to hell with it. Yeah. So in the context here, he's kind of saying like he's doing all this effort to try to get people to buy from me. He's like, ah, let me just find an easier way. Ah! 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 So we had to do it the hard way. Hmm? What does it mean when he says we had to do it the hard way? It simply means that he had to use a more aggressive or forceful method to solve his problem there. Uh, so you can imagine that there could be an easy way to do it. In this case, the guy could have simply bought the lemonade for him. Mm -hmm. And the hard way, which is what you just saw. <laughs> exactly. And so people will actually use this phrase like we can do this the easy way or the hard way, giving you the choice of 
giving in to their wishes or having to suffer some sort of consequence. A parent might even use this with their child to say, you know, you can either do this the easy way, basically do what I'm telling you to do, or the hard way, suffer some sort of punishment. And he says, a nice looking wife you've got after looking in the guy's wallet. There's a cultural thing here too that, I don't know if this happens in all countries, but people in the States at least used to carry small photographs, maybe of their, their partner, their children inside their wallet. Six bucks. Nice looking wife you've got. Maybe I'll look her up while you're in the hospital. But what does he mean here by nice looking? Yeah, this is just a shortcut for saying that somebody looks nice. You can say that they're nice looking or good looking. Or if they look weird, you can say that they're weird looking. And if you're writing, you want to make sure to include a hyphen there. So mm, good point. nice hyphen looking. And finally, he says this. it's very dark, but like that he's going to look her up while he's in the hospital. So if you look someone up in this sort of context, it's like traditionally that you look them up in the phone book. You know, you have someone's name and you'd look them up and then you would you would call them. So you're searching for information about that person. We could also use another phrase of verb called reach out that I might say, hey, Izzy, when you're in Barcelona, reach out, meaning like get in contact with me. I think another common application for look up these days, uh, you know, in the digital world, it would be to just Google somebody, right? Or something, you mm -hmm. look it up on the internet, you will Google it. Six bucks. Nice looking wife you've got. Maybe I'll look her up while you're in the hospital. Don't forget your lemonade. So we end the scene with him throwing the lemonade on the guy, <laughs> poor guy. So he says, don't forget yours in a very connected way. We have a very common morphing here of when we have a T followed by a Y sound that it becomes a CH sound. So forget your becomes forget your. And we have a stop T in don't. So instead of saying don't, we say don't. Don't forget your. So let's listen to Stewie say that again and repeat with him. Don't forget your lemonade. All right. Awesome job today. Now it's time to put your listening to the test by watching that scene again without the subtitles and seeing how well you can comprehend it now that you've learned all the different vocabulary and cultural notes. Please forgive me, Mr. Oinkbaum, you will be missed. There we are. What are you doing? None of your beeswax, Ramona. But if you must know, I need a plane ticket to San Francisco. <laughs> Good luck. Plane tickets are about 450 bucks. 400? Brian, hit me in the mouth. What? Why? I hear this tooth fairy gives you money for your teeth. Have at it. Uh, okay. No, no, don't, don't, don't. Stop, stop. Why did you stop? I said hit me. You flinched. Well, of course I flinched. You were going to hit me. Well, make up your mind. What do you want me to do? Hit me. No, ah, no, don't, don't, don't. <sighs> I'm sorry. Look, I know I'm being hard to read. <laughs> You there! Buy this yellow drink! Hey, Prego! Prego! Hey! Hey, I'm talking to you, Tubby! Oh, don't you ignore me! Ooh! Pardon me, sir! S sir! Sir! Oh, the hell with this! Ah! 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 So, we had to do it the hard way, hmm? Six bucks! Nice looking wife you've got! Maybe I'll look her up while you're in the hospital! Don't forget your lemonade! Awesome work today! Hope you had a lot of fun learning with Family Guy. And if you did, I bet you're going to really enjoy learning with this lesson we recently made with The Simpsons. So you might want to check that out next. Gee boy, notice how Bostonians aren't exactly ugly, but they're not sexy either. Homer, your negative attitude is ruining this hatecation. So what to hate first? The Freedom Trail? The touch tank at the New England Aquarium? Ooh, that could blow. I want to go to Southie. That part of town has the towniest townies of any town. <laughs> you think your Bostonians are so great? Watch as your beloved hooligans tear your innocent father limb from limb with just the slightest provocation. <laughs>